So one of the most powerful things that I got from conference is understanding that we are always one choice away from a completely different future. We are one choice away from the life of our dreams and we are one choice away from completely transforming our family's lives. Because see, conference isn't just about us. It's also about the people that we love. And when we pursue Jesus, that transforms us. So here we are a year later and conference is coming up again. You know, I look back on the last year of my life and it was incredible. You know, right now I'm living a life that I absolutely love. I have an incredible relationship with Jesus and my family is being healed. It's amazing. And I look back on a year ago and that all happened because I made one choice. And what we have to understand is we are always one choice away from a completely different future. And for so many of you, that one choice is whether or not you go to conference. So I urge you with all of my heart and soul do whatever it takes to get there because God has blessings and miracles waiting for you just like he did me. Our faith is in someone. His name is Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord and Savior. You were meant to be different. You were meant to be more original. You were meant to stand out. I declare war on fear. I'm going to become fear's greatest fear. That I'd be given authority and you keep on praying that prayer. A new container, a new mindset, a new purpose. If the church is going to be the hope of the world, our worlds are going to have to get bigger. I want to talk to you today about perseverance, perseverance, and perspective. I want to talk to you today about conquering fear through perseverance and perspective. If we're going to conquer fear in our life, it's going to take perseverance. We're not gonna be able to conquer fear in a day. We're not gonna be able to conquer fear in a month. It's gonna take a lifetime of warriors saying, you know what, I declare fear for the rest of my, I declare war on fear for the rest of my life. I will wake up every day and choose to be fear's greatest fear. I'm believing that dads would stand up and say that. I'm believing that moms would stand up and say that. I'm believing that young adults would stand up and believe that. I'm believing for some youth to stand up and believe that. But I'm believing for a group of people from every background and every race and every creed to say, I choose today to live a lifetime of being fear's greatest fear. I want to be hell's greatest threat. I want to be their number one target. And I believe that there's a group of people that are saying, I want to do that. And if we're going to do that, we have to get attached to perseverance. We have to get up again and again and again and again. And we have to get a new perspective on this war that we're in. The perspective I want you to know is that Jesus, he has purpose for your life. Every person under the sound of my voice, there is a purpose that you are here. There is a purpose to your days on earth. This is why you cannot make me do your funeral early. There was a guy that was recently texting me, Pastor, I want to end my life. I'm going through hell. I want to end my life. And I said, please, I know you'll do that to yourself, but please don't do that to me. Please don't make me stand at your funeral and talk about how good you were, but the life that you missed out on. God has a call and a destiny and a purpose for every day that he planned you to be here on this earth. He planned you for such a time as this to walk amongst these people on earth and to change the score. Somebody say, hey, I'm here. Say, hey, I'm here to change the score. You are called to change the score. There is a purpose in your life. There is a destiny for your life. The Bible says there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. It's no use. Ah, oh God, why'd you call me to do this? So hard. You know, I tell God all the time, you got the wrong guy. When the pandemic broke out and downtown was going crazy and I said, God, you got the wrong guy. I'm from Galt, California. Great American little town. God, when I was in high school, we got our first stoplight. 
I grew up on 60 acres. God, I don't understand what's happening. I don't know how to help these people. And God said, I didn't get the wrong guy because I don't ever make mistakes. I have a purpose for your life. And we find him when we get to the end of ourself. Sometimes God will lead you to the end of yourself to find him. You've been looking for God, but you can't look for God in the fullness of you. You have to look for the God in the emptiness of you. When you run out of answers, when you run out of solutions, when you run out of how-tos, many times in my life, God's like, are you finally done with all your ideas to get to where I called you to? Are you ready to do it how I called you to do it in a way that doesn't make sense, that will be mocked and ridiculed for years until all of a sudden people go, oh, I knew you could do it. I always believed in you. It's the same people that try to put you down that one day will clap and ask you for tickets to your concert. Love on them. Be you. Keep going forward. Keep getting up. Keep being the person God called you to be. God has a purpose for your life. When you get to see the life that God has for you, you got to remember whenever you get with him, it's like sitting with the director of the movie. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows every cut. He knows every heartache. He knows every redemption part. And when you sit with him, you start getting courage to know that when he says it ends in a way you'll like, you start getting excited even in the parts that feel bad. You start having joy even the parts you want to run out on. Because it's not a movie about someone else, it's a movie about you. This is why daily I got to sit with the author. This is why daily I got to get with the director. This is why daily I got to say, what kind of things did you plan? Because I feel like, I feel like my character is dead. And he says, don't worry. He's just got his eyes closed. Don't, don't worry. I know he got knocked down. But I put a whole scene in here where he gets back up. See, see, the devil is a liar. The devil also sit next to you in the film and he'll say, this is where it all ends. This is where it all crashes. This is where God forgot to add. And you better tell the devil, devil, you are a liar. God has a purpose. He has a purpose and a destiny for my life. He chose me for good things, not to harm me. He chose me for great things. He didn't send his son to die and pay for my life if I am worthless. He redeemed me for such a time as this, and I am a voice to my generation. Don't forget, though, God has purpose, but also has power. Power to break through things you don't think you can break through. God's power is unmatched. It's not yin and yang. It's not light and darkness. God is in both. God is everywhere all the time. God is not playing catch up with the devil. The devil is playing catch up with God. You need to understand your God is not broke. He is not left out. He is not hurting. He is not worried. He is not stressed. He's not anxious. He's God all by himself. Your God has no seats at the table. It's just him and a seat for you. God has no board of directors. He has no PA. He has no calendar he needs to keep up with. He is not just an administrator. He is the administrator of all. When he spoke, things shift and change. Chaos becomes order. Death becomes life. Healing happens. Signs, wonders, and miracles. He has no beginning. Put that in your crack pipe and smoke it. Do you understand? He has no beginning. You say, why you say that? To wake you up. I know you heard it. He has no beginning. Do you even comprehend that? I don't. I don't. I don't understand. How does he have no beginning? Who made God? My son asked me that. I said, son, I don't know. I don't know how that works. That's how I can know he's God and I'm not. That's how I know he's bigger than me. Because my brain starts melting when I just think of that simple thought. He's all powerful. They say if we tried to run the sun, it would take the sum total of all of our nation's wealth and every nation of the earth. It would take all the wealth that we ever had for seven million. That's a kid's ministry. They're going after God right there. 
Tell them to turn it down just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> they're like just lost. They're encountering God, man. What's hey, there is no junior high Holy Spirit. There is no baby Holy Spirit. There's only big dog Holy Spirit. And he's touching those kids' lives right now. Come on, somebody. I like the sound of that. I could deal with the sound of that. <laughs> if you haven't discovered, I have ADD. <laughs> Where was I at? <laughs> it would take the sum total, total of all of our nation's wealth of the earth for 7 million years if we all threw all our money in to run the sun. And you know how long we could run it? For seven seconds. That is the math that they've done on the power exuded from the sun. Yet your God spoke and it became. And it has stood since he spoke it and will stand till he says it's done. And that's not the only star in the galaxy. It's not even the biggest burning star in solar systems that we can't even discover. And that is your dad. That is your God. That is the power. Can I ask you this? What's, what's too great for him? What's too big for him? What have you been throwing and saying, God, it's such a big thing? No, no, it's so big because you're closer to that than you are to him. When you start moving closer to him than you are to that, you'll discover how big he is, how powerful he is. You know you can squish the sun with your fingers but you can't squish the sun with your fingers. It's just your perspective is off. You're so far from the sun, so it's become so small. If your God has become small, it's not because he's little. It's because life moved you from him. It's time to drag life back to him because life is only found in him and through him. If he has a purpose, you better know if he's going to use me, he has to have power. Because the power is not that I preach, it's that I shouldn't be able to. That I can't put sentences together. That I stutter at times. That I can't really fully understand everything in here. But then the Holy Spirit, in his supernatural power, does things. That I, that I failed most of my English class, but I wrote a book. It's not the fact that I wrote a book. It's the fact that I shouldn't be able to. But God not only has a purpose, he also has power. So what are you waiting on? That you're waiting for you to be able to do it. When God said you aren't going to do it, you're going to watch it. All you got to do is believe for it. See, he wants to switch your perspective in, on perseverance. Because he not only has purpose and power, he has a plan. Somebody say that with me. He has a plan. He has a plan. Say it again louder. He has a plan. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man, or we could say woman, are ordered. God has put an order in in heaven. Okay, we'll take a, we'll take a fire from a job there. We'll take a broken relationship there. We'll, 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 take, we'll, we'll walk you through this there. Uh, you're going to go in the hospital here. Uh, you're going to get that bad report there. There's an open door. Okay, but then we got a few more. God orders your steps. Okay, here you go. And you're like, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> I got to plan my way, God. I planned my dreams. Good. You want that? Here's the ingredients. Scared to take it, huh? See, see, but what you need to know is you can't just have the ingredients. you got to know when to use them, how to use them, and how long. See, every good cook can look at ingredients, but there's timing and plans. You can't just throw it all in the bucket at once. So God says, okay, you can't handle it all at once. I'm going to put in, and we're going to bake this, and we're going to turn this, and we're going to heat this, and we're going to molt this, and, and we're going to put this together. And by the time I'm done, it's not going to look anything like the ingredients, but you'll be able to taste all of it in there. See, see, when, when you come to this place, you are everything that life made you with Jesus as the cook, creating a whole new you that alone that thing tastes nasty. Alone, if I just eat pepper, if I just eat a whole bunch of seasoning, if I just eat a raw egg, if I just eat some flour, it, it's not good. But the Lord at the end says, taste and see. Taste and see what I worked up. It took 10 years to get there. But, but every step, 
See, God, man plans his ways, but God orders your steps. Sometimes we, we have to realize that the, the, the best success is obedience to the steps. Can you worship on this step? Here, let's, say, let's say it like this. I think there's a little bit of light over here. Can, can you worship here? Like you're going to worship here? Can, can you worship on this step knowing that the God of this is also the God of here? I know you were good here because it was the first step. So everyone's excited to start. But very few people make it through the middle. But, but if, you, if you can't handle the middle, God can't give you where he's taking you, the purpose and the plan for, for your life. But, but you've but you got to be faithful in the middle. See, 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 praise happens at the beginning and the end. Praise is our reaction to God doing it, God speaking it, and God completing it. He's the author and the finisher. That's where praise happens. But worship happens on the steps. When you don't see it and you don't feel it and you feel abandoned and you feel alone and you don't understand being fired from a job. I thought we were going here, God. This step does not make sense. No, this step is elevating you. I know it's not taking you completely where you want to go, but I'm elevating you to a place to show you you can trust me here when you don't have the money, when you don't have the signs and wonders and miracles. When I say no, can you trust me? on the steps and then God says okay now that you trust me with that step you passed let's go to the next step see God is looking for some step praisers some step worshipers some people that got a new perspective on life see the Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 12 verse number one it says therefore we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run how? Perseverance. Perseverance. Let us run with what? So to get to your destiny, sorry for the lights blinding you guys. This happens every service. We're gonna, <laughs> it's this one right here. B24 or five, okay. It's not the lighting guy's fault. I think our thing's freaking out. Amen. Praise God. Let us run with what? So your race is not going to be easy. So when, when, you, when you get with God and you, you're all mad at God because it's difficult and you're frustrated, God, I thought I, when I gave my life to you, everything was going to get easy. I thought heavenly angels were going to show up and just give me Jesus butterflies. I thought every day was just going to be a, a cakewalk with you. And I thought it was just going to be, I, I heard those people talking like, you just speak to them and you're just, I see you in the rainbows and the clouds and, and the signs. God, I thought, I thought I was just going to find my spouse. You know, my, one, one of my next door neighbors is like, I, you know, I got baptized and everything's been going great in my life. And I just kind of was like, awesome, man. Just wait. Just give it some time. Yeah, because today's the Super Bowl, right, Matt? Where you get that? Today's the Super Bowl. So, so today's the Super Bowl. So, so when I have this, it means I have what? The ability to change the score. Someone said the ball. Yeah, that's good. When I have this, I have the ball. <laughs> what happens when you have the ball? You have the ability to change the score. So if I give you the ball, you now have the ability to change the score. So when you get the ball, thank you. Why are you so confused that all hell is coming against you? God, give me the ball. I'm open. I'm open. It's great, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why is everyone trying to tackle me? Why is the devil trying to take me out? Oh man, I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'll just, I'll just go be a couch potato. I'll just sit back and let others, I, I, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I want any of that Christianity stuff. I, I thought, I thought my life was going to get better. It was, but you haven't crossed the end zone. See, it's not fun. It's fulfilling. See, when you get the ball, it's not supposed to be fun. Oh, this is so fun. Everyone's trying to tackle me and kill me. This is amazing. Oh, man. No, but when you cross the line, it's fulfilling. 
God chose you to change the game. He chose you to change the score, but it's gonna take some perseverance. It's gonna take a person who gets an attitude with the enemy and says, I'm not dying here. I'm not, I'm not gonna not worship here. I'm gonna trust God here. I'm gonna love God here. I'm gonna continue even though I'm broken, even though it's hard. And then you start saying, bring it on. I mean, you might do the, I don't know how to do that. The giddy, right? The gritty. Josh, how's that go? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna take perseverance. In fact, James 1, 2 says this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Anybody here face the trial? How many face the trial of many kinds? I don't know what kind of trials those. That's a trial of many kinds. That's multiple names, that trial. I'm happy to get out of that season like one escaping the flame. God <laughs> says, count it, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. And here's why. Not because it was fun, but because it was fulfilling. For you know that the testing of your faith you don't have faith unless it's been tested. Faith isn't powerful unless you can test it. Don't trust anything that hasn't been tested. The testing is to prove that it works. I'm so thankful that they test planes before I get on them. I'm so thankful that they test cars before I drive. I'm so thankful that the doctor goes through tests before they operate. The testing isn't punishment, it's elevation. God is trying to elevate you through the testing and the trials because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. See, God is wanting you to get up from the mat again. See, grace... Grace is, grace is not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. Grace is not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. See, many of us believe that we can be believers and declare war on fear and put no time in at the spiritual gym. Not trust them in any of our problems. Just show up. Like, I don't play piano at all. I don't play piano, I don't sing. Can you imagine if today I just said, you yeah, know, I'm just gonna trust the Lord. <laughs> I believe, I really believe that if I put my hand on these keys, God has called me to it. So all I gotta do is walk over with no work because God is opposed to work. No, grace is opposed to earning, not to effort. Can you imagine if I walked up and said, I'm just gonna sing. It's gonna be amazing. You guys are gonna really be blessed. And I just, no, no, no. I'm not gonna do it because everyone would run. You would cry. I don't know what chords to play. And then I get mad at God because I'm embarrassed. Because I chose not to put in the work when no one was watching. If you want to be a warrior in the kingdom of God, you gotta get in the spiritual gym. There was a guy I was working out with recently, just the other day. He's a, he's a pro uh, fighter, and he trains in the gym eight hours a day. We were talking about our kids, and his kids are into soccer. My kid's into soccer, he's, and you've heard it several times. We've been here. I've preached a lot of sermons about this, but uh, my son Brave is in soccer. He's, he's into a club league, and it takes a lot. I mean, we're driving to practices six days a week, and he said, my kids love soccer. I really want to get them in it, but they don't know the cost of being in the club. He said, so they're just gonna be in the dad league till they can count the cost. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I didn't have a childhood. I'm a pro fighter. I went to the gym every day. When the other kids were out playing, I was in the gym. When they were going to birthday parties, I was in the gym. When they were having fun, I was getting choked out. He said, so I am who I am because I put in the effort he said, and they aren't ready for the effort, so I'm not signing them up till they can understand and count the cost. See, salvation cost him everything, 
but discipleship will cost us everything. If you want to be a warrior for Christ, you got to count the cost and say, you know what? I'm not just going to be a Sunday Christian because that ain't working. That's the American church called religion. I'm going to be a believer even if I fail over and over again. I'm going to get up another day. Maybe I got a curse word and a praise at the same time, but I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. God, I want to be used by you. I want to be chosen by you. My son is here. Brave, come here. Someone take this ball. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. My son is training to be a professional soccer player. We decided that because he's not in the dad league anymore. When he was in the dad league, we won the tournament, me and him together. Praise God. But the dad league is the league where the kids are picking flowers and <laughs> he's in the real league. I mean, these kids will beat most of us. So we decided if you're going to be in the real league, then we're going to put in time. And so I've told brave, Hey, the moment you want out of the real league, we can go back to the dad league. But until then we're going to work hard. And so brave's been getting that passion inside of him. Not without fear, not without, oh man, can I do this? Every day we have to talk him down from the mountain saying, all right, do you want to do this? Is this what, and this is what we need to see as believers. It's going to take a lot more than your Sunday Christianity, than your one worship song to see breakthrough from demons that have been haunting your family for 30 years. If you really want to see breakthrough, you got to get in the spiritual gym and say, God, I got to, look, one workout's not going to do it. And you can't come in the gym and just watch everybody else and expect to get buff. That's called creepy. The guy in the gym like, that's awesome, man. What's that guy doing? That's us as believers coming into the gym of faith, watching everybody else work out and thinking it's going to affect us. If you want to lose the old you and gain the new you, you got to put in some time. So Brave was doing okay on the field. He was maybe like fourth pick or whatever. And now he's risen to being one of the top players. Just last weekend, he scored seven goals in one game in the club league. And, uh, and uh, Bray's been juggling. His coach told him that the best exercise you can do is to juggle. And so Brave is in a little tiny room in his bedroom, and he's been juggling every single day for three or four hours a day juggling till he's sweaty, till he's got his shirt off, till he's just going after it like a man of God. And so the first thing I told him, Brave, if you get a hundred juggles, I thought it would take him till he's like 16. If you get a hundred juggles, I'll give you a hundred dollars. I told him without asking mom. In, in one week he called me and said, dad, I got a hundred juggles. I said, Brave, you did it. I don't believe you. Did you film it? No, I didn't film it. Okay. Well then you have to film it, honey. I gave Brave a hundred dollars if he juggles. Two minutes later, my mom calls back. She was watching the kids. Hey, I just filmed Brave. He got 108 juggles. Son, I think you owe him $100. <laughs> so after that, he got passionate to beating that. He went to 200, 268. Now I made the mistake of telling him, if you get 1,000 juggles, I will let you do whatever to my hair that you want. So if in, if in three weeks I have a pink mohawk, it's not my fault. And so, Brave, would you juggle a little bit for us? Real quick, before you juggle anymore. Oh, oh, he's trying to get. You're getting, you're liking this stage, huh? You're liking it. You like it? Hey, tell us, tell us the journey. Give me that thing. Give me that, that thing. Will you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's what I have to do in his room to get his attention. Homework time. Tell us the process 
of being able to get to now you today in the back you were practicing you beat you beat your old record you got 300 and what eight 308 in a row tell us the first time you juggled how many did you get um three three and that was hard huh yeah and did you feel like you would never ever be able to do more how'd um, you feel did you feel like quitting yeah yeah you feel like giving up because three was like impossible <laughs> Now, how easy is three? Easy. 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 Can you do three probably with like almost closing your eyes or without even trying? Now, now then, then it went from three to what? How did it go? What was the process? Three to, three to, um, ten, um, yeah. three to 19 to, to, to oh, um, 40, um, 45, 48, 50, 53, 55, 102, 200, um, um, 204, 268, 300 Yeah. So now here's why I had him tell you that. Because do you see how he remembers every moment he failed at? Do you see how he remembers every step? Like he's not just making that up off the top of his head. He's like 32. Yep, I remember that time. I was sweating for four hours and no one cared and I got 32. I didn't film. See, see, you're going to remember the pain you went through and everybody else is going to experience the victory through the pain that you were deciding to go through when no one was watching. And God is going to use your pain in purpose and in destiny. This last week, Brave got seven goals. His team got to enjoy the benefits of what someone was willing to put in in the private. See, what we're believing for is that this team would benefit from what time you put in in private to being the person of God that you're, the world is waiting. All of creation is waiting on the sons and daughters of God to say, God, I'm willing. I'm here. I'm ready to be a disciple. I'm ready to put in the time. I'm ready to conquer fear one step at a time. Thank you, Brave. Thank you. See, as the piano comes, thank, oh, look at that. We're, we're synced up, bro. I hope Brave gets me hair like you or something like that. Who could, who could know? I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. It won't be my fault, folks. That's, that's, I'm just leaving it up to him. Here's some, someone's laughing. Someone just pictured me. This is a seed. This is a lily. The end result of a lily looks like this. But the beginning steps look like this. If I gave my wife lilies, she would be thankful. But if I gave her this, she said, what is it? I said, it's a gift. What? It's just a cool mohawk coming out the side. And See, we keep trying to present ourselves like this. And God said, there has to be a process. Because I don't just have purpose and power, I have a plan. But my plan includes the process. I know you want the purpose. I know we crave the power. But what if a generation started enjoying the plan? Because the same way God is in the purpose and in the power, he's also in the plan. In fact, my Bible says he's near to the brokenhearted. At the end of myself, I find him. Maybe your greatest place to find God won't be in your purpose. It will be in the plan. Maybe when you meet him on the steps, you're going to find him in a way you never knew he could be. See, it's those moments where I felt really broken. It's those moments where I didn't know what to do or how to do it that God met me. And although the world would have been like, what's that? God said, I have a plan. One day, they'll cheer you on. One day, they'll see what I see. But you got to trust me. God takes us out, and he drops us in a hole, and he covers us with manure and dirt, junk, and he sends water down. 
He rains down on our life. And every once in a while, we feel that power of God. What God is doing is he's killing the outside, the things that were the extra to produce the beauty. See, when you see a tulip, you don't say, wow, that's a really pretty version of what used to be ugly. You just enjoy the beauty. See, one day, no one will see this. But you got to be going, willing to go through the death, burial, so you can have a resurrection. There's this Instagram quote that keeps saying, disappear for six months. Work out, eat right, train your mind, and appear back. Shock the whole world. And it keeps inspiring me. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm going to just disappear. And so if I disappear, sorry, I'll just disappear and come back looking like Micah Fong. You know what I'm saying? But isn't that kind of part of the gospel? Not disappear from this family, but quit worrying about what's coming one day. Just take this moment and say, God, I love this step. And be careful to call permanent what God calls temporary. The steps are not a place for you to live. They're a place for you to die. It's on the steps that another part of you is broken off. The ugliness, the bitterness, the shame, the guilt. And God is bringing something to life on the underneath. That even if he were to tell you, you wouldn't believe him. There's no way. There's no way anything's good in here. God's like, just trust me. Who in here is being buried right now? Who in here are things being broken off right now? Who in here does this message speak to? See, the, the seed is the flower. Just in its immature state. Let me ask you this question. Can you believe in the flower next to you? Even when they don't look like what they will become? Can you believe in the person next to you in their stages? Can you get a God vision? And God confidence, which we call Godfidence in this church, on their life. Lord, shift our perspective. God, let us put in work. Let us not be afraid of hard work. It's not by works that we're saved, but Lord, it is by the work in us through the Holy Spirit that we become all that you've called us to be. Lord, I just pray over this group right now. Would you just bow your heads, close your eyes? If you're in this room today, the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, as your eyes are closed and your head is bowed, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Lord, we're going we're gonna to set our hearts to become people that say, I'm not giving up. If that's you today, you say, I'm not giving up. I want you just to lift your hand right there where you're at. I'm not giving up. I'm choosing today. Not giving up is a choice, not a feeling. I'm not giving up. Because God, I, not because I don't feel like giving up, but because I'm believing for a harvest. Because I want you to turn the pain into power. The death into life the chaos into order. God, do what only you can do. So one day when I stand up there, wherever up there is, I will say not by my might, not by strength, but by the Lord did I arrive here. In fact, I don't all the way know how I got here and I don't deserve here, but God chose me for here. One day, God, We won't be able to take credit for what you do in our family, in our job, in our workplace, in our dreams. But we'll be able to say, if not for God. So we say yes. We say yes to the daily. We say yes to the testing. We say yes to the trials by fire. If it's going to produce in us pure gold. We say yes to you seeing your face in us. We say yes to the gym of the spirit we say yes God we say yes because not because it's fun but because it will be fulfilling because you chose to pass us the ball to change the score
for our family, for our friends, for our co-workers, for our church, for you. God, we're not a fan. We're a fanatic. God set us on fire. Fearless Online Church. Man, what an amazing day so far. Right now is an opportunity for us to give back. We've been receiving so much. I, I don't know about you, but I've been blessed from what's going on in this stream and what God is doing in this church. Proverbs 19:17 says this, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he, the Lord, will repay him for his deeds. This church is all about reaching the needs of our city and cities worldwide. In fact, last year alone, we were able to pass out 2.2 million pounds of food. Come on, somebody, that's a lot of food. We, we gave out food and we were able to pray for every single person. We also washed their cars, uh, pretty much the modern day uh, version of washing someone's feet. Man, what an awesome experience that we've got to have through generous givers just like you. You may not be able to be here on ground zero level, feeding people, clothing people, loving on people, but you sure can be a part of this by giving your finances and lending, in a sense, to the Lord. And we know that you can't outgive God. I've found over 41 years of life that no matter how much I give to the Lord, He always gives back. He gives back so much more, no matter how much I release. I really believe that the spirit of generosity is alive in our generation. We need to meet people's physical needs so they'll open their heart so God can meet their spiritual need. Would you help us do that? We want to give out more clothing. We want to give out more food. We want to touch thousands more people. In fact, this year, I'm believing to give out 4 million pounds of food. Would you step out in faith with us? Would you become a partner today? Everything in life to get anywhere really takes partnership. Every one of us are here because of partnership. Life happens because of partnership. I have a dream that we would reach people's physical need to give them a spiritual truth. Who Jesus is, who Jesus wants to be in their life. That love that we so boldly profess as Christians. Would you pray today about your gift, whatever size, large or small, that you're going to partner with us once a month to see God do something incredible in a city. You can sign up for Fearless Partners today. Why wait another day? Let's be generous like our God and watch that generous God while we bless others continue to fill our, our vats, our barns, our, our dream, our business, our family fuller than we ever could have ourselves. God bless you as you give today. Let me pray over your giving as I believe people are moved today to become generous and partner with the Fearless Partners. Jesus, we pray over this giving. We pray over these people that are going to sow into this ministry. We, we say right now, God, Lord, as we lend to the poor, as we help those in need, Lord, that you would help those that are giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. We hope that it blessed you and we hope that you have an incredible rest of your day. God bless.